go. You've become a she thinks she's Skeletor? Okay, now we actually had to walk into that room. The part where Joanna walks through the door is scripted and the door locks behind her, which is unfair because otherwise this thing would be extremely easy. Joanna just decides to make it harder on herself because she's Joanna. So, we've got to kill off all the bodyguards, which um, I'm doing by wasting a whole lot of ammo because they killed me off here last time when I tried to show off the turning on of the light switch. If you turn on this light switch, then it will stun all of them briefly, but you have to actually run straight towards one of the guards and have one of the guards directly in front of you with a shotgun in order to do that, which is not very bright, to put it very mildly indeed. Now, after Cassandra has run off, you can actually go back down into that room at the bottom and you will uncover a strange and secret thing, which I will show you in a moment, because as you can see, there's a quite a lot of this video left yet, so we'll make our way up to the landing pad now, and we've finished the level, we've won, hooray. Going somewhere? Mm, yeah, I was just taking a stroll in your landing pad. Something I can do for you, old woman. Return no. our sapient immediately. You don't know what you're doing. That's never stopped her before. I I'm leaving. One more chance. Quick, cock our guns wrong. And you could come and work for me. I hire everyone who's killed all of my employees. Yes, and suddenly this dropship comes in out of nowhere. Who's flying this thing anyway? It's not like there's even a door to get into the cab. And the building collapses. Get the sapient back. We cannot proceed without it. What do you know? You're just an elbow. Mr. Yes, th th these are our evil conspirators. They just sort of shove each other around randomly as, as part of conversations. Um, when we get to G5, you're going to see the uh, the conversation they have there is hilarious. But um, I won't give that away. What, does he think his gun's loaded with warning shots or something? Special warning ammo? Uh, Frank, you know we're, uh, we're actually using the armor piercing bullets? We are? Oh, hell. Uh, there goes my commission. Okay, now why have we gone up here? Well, uh, firstly I was going to try and demonstrate the fact that you can shoot this thing down with a pistol on Perfect Agent on the roof. What is the significance of being on the roof? Well, it can fire rockets at you, and that caused something to happen which was unplanned and bizarre, and which I'm going to show you instead, because it's extremely funny. Now you might have also noticed that at the end of that cutscene previously, Cassandra completely misread her line. She implied that she was actually talking to Daniel Carrington, by the way she said Mr. Carrington. She's actually supposed to just be saying, I know I need to talk to Mr. Carrington, rather than I, I am talking to you, Mr. Carrington. At any minute now, this gunship is going to do its special thing, because it can only fire its rockets when it is around the front of the building. And um, I think it's in like the front 90 degrees in the middle or something like that. It's probably something extremely technical and not particularly interesting, but it's about to happen. Here we go, it sweeps into there, and then... blows itself up. I tried, and I tried, and I tried, but it just refuses to do anything that looks as awesome as it does. Uh, what happened there was that it fired a rocket from its wingtip, it then swung over and smacked the rocket directly into the hitbox under its nose. It's tragic and useless. Alright, so now, if we go back down into the lobby after Cassandra has buggered off, we find that she is in this room along with her co-conspirators and everyone else in that cutscene. So, we can do things, evil things, unpleasant things. How oh, will you and I pass the time? <laughs> yeah. Okay, we'll just sense censor that for the sake of all your sanities. As you can see, we're now on agent mode, which means that these crates are in fact up here. And there is a there are a lot of things you can do to fuck around with this cutscene actually, and I'm gonna show you another one right now. What you do is you take the dragon and you put it on proximity self-destruct, you throw it about here, you then walk around it, and then walk back onto it in order to trigger the cutscene, like so. Because Dr. Carroll turns out to be a physics enabled object, which means he can be propelled by an explosion and fall straight off the landing pad. You'll see the consequences of that in a moment. Aside from Joanna interacting with you nothing, but yes, she has a landmine doing. stuck to her face and yes, apparently hasn't noticed this. I'm Does this surprise anyone? Nope. One more chance. Give it back. And you could come and work for me. Sorry, I only work for people who don't have explosive devices attached to their face. Oh, you're racist. Okay, so she guns down those as if she hasn't done enough to them already. And yes, that is Dr. Carol floating right next to her. But it's right there. I know that. Are you guys talking about me? Ow, stop no shoving. To talk to Mr. Okay, so Joanna escapes once again, and we go back to our Perfect Agent mission complete screen. That is it, and next time, well, in fact, this time, because I'm posting these videos at the same time, we are going to go to the villa in order to save Daniel Carrington from his own incredible crass stupidity. I have been Evil Tim, and this has been Perfect Dark. Continue onward, and upward, and sideways.